the Daddy and the Danny, and we're back with... We are back. ...this week's Deck of the Week. On the other side of the country. Boom! Dude, it's like a flash lightning going on here. There's a storm going on in Kerwin's game store. Is that guy dabbing? He's like... No, I don't think he's dabbing. He's like getting ready to do some like... He actually... This is what it is. It's the glory bound initiate exerted. Well, what about the other guy? He's just sitting there. He's just a normal glory bound initiate. All right, so we're doing the deck of the week. Blue White Flash. This is Ryochi Tamada's deck. Yes. It's uh, Grand Prix near, Manila Champion. Yeah. Near and dear to your heart, I'm sure. This is a deck that I played a lot. Reflector Mage was great. Smuggler's Comfort was great. I never played it after that. And so we wanted to go over this because it was a brand new deck or a brand new take on an old deck. And uh, here we go. Uh, we'll see how bad this deck beat up on Marvel. That was kind of the point. Yeah. Uh, so All right. We've got four Thraven Inspectors, four Glorybound Initiate, and four Soulful Spirit. And this is the early creature core. We've seen some versions of Blue White that weren't playing Thraven Inspector. Those people are wrong. Yeah. This card is like the best card in this type of deck. Um, you know, w once you have an Avacyn in play, like, they can't really attack because you just chump block and it flips. Like, there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things that it's good with it. It draws cards, um, variety of things. There's no metallic rebukes in here, but the, the clue does, does help with uh, improvise, which is something that people did, did in the strategy in the past. Yeah, just a 1-2 for 1 mana that provides uh, value later on in the game. Um, and just, like, stems the bleeding. Like, one of the problems with this deck is... Previously, with cards like Selfless Spirit and Rattle Chains, those cards don't block very well. You know, when it had Reflector Mage, it didn't have as many problems with the aggressive decks because it could just offset that and gain the tempo back. But without that, sometimes you just need to, like, throw a guy in front of a Toolcraft Exemplar or a, um... Yep. Another, Gideon. like, one... Yeah, well, even a Gideon sometimes, but I was thinking more of just, like, getting in a trade for a one-toughness creature. Oh, sure. It's just always good. Um, um, yeah, and it's like when you, you, you um... The blue eye flash decks crack Gideon emblems a lot, make Gideon emblems a lot, and this card becomes a reasonable attacker and blocker when you have a Gideon emblem too. Yeah. So it's just it's just basically everything you want to be doing in the deck. Agreed. And for Glory Bound Initiate, it's one of the aggressive two drops. Uh, this one can get a little bit bigger, but does not have evasion, but does provide some lifelink for racing and stuff. Yeah, we've seen like this be a big uptick. We even saw it in Modern, and uh, people painful are just playing truths. this card with painful truths, and I think that. They're doing it. Like, you're gaining four life. If the creature's not dealt with, you know, exerting every other turn, you know, four damage. The, the four damage life swing is huge. Yeah, it's certainly it's certainly good a good rate for two mana. Um, I would be concerned uh, now that Marvel's gone because of stuff like Liliana just being really good and, and less uh, less dangerous to play. Still weak to Ballista as well. Yep, if, agreed. And that's been played now right now in black green, so... But then we have four Selfless Spirits. Um, okay. I think one of the most important cards for the blue-eyed strategies in general, because at the core, now that you don't have Reflector Mages, this deck is a Selfless Spirit, or is a Spellcaller deck and an Abyssin deck. Okay. And that's what it does, and those are the most powerful play patterns, aside from Gideon, of course. Sure. And the way that you win with this deck most of the time is... Protecting spell, multiple spell quellers and uh, flipping an Abyssin and or flipping an Abyssin. It's just another two drop that's very powerful. Yes, this card, like we just talked about, Glorybound Initiate, is weak to Liliana. So is Selfless Spirit. But other than that, it just synergizes really well with the deck. Like but whether it's protecting an Abyssin or helping to flip an Abyssin, you know, saving your team, like the turn you're talking about, like Ultimate and Gideon, can be really powerful stuff. All right. Some more creatures. Here we go. Two Thalia, Heretic uh, Cathar, four Spell Queller, and four Archangel Avacyn. Yeah, so the, the Thalias are essentially just um, an additional two, or two copies of a three drop to fill out the curve. And with um, obviously no longer able to play Reflector Mage, uh, this is probably the next best three drop that you've got uh, after Spell Queller. So. Card's pretty aggressive. It's pretty good against Planeswalkers a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, can get even bigger with a Gideon Emblem, obviously. Um, decent against Marvel as they have a fair amount of non-basic lands, and it makes their best blockers against you, which are mainly World of Virtuosos. 
um, pretty pretty bad at blocking as their the Falcons don't block either. Yeah, one of the most underrated parts of that card, like you just talked about, is the non-basic lands. There's a lot of three-color decks now. There's a lot of decks playing, whether it's Evolving Wilds, Attune with Aether, being able to fix their mana. But coming down on turn three, and if people are sequencing their lands incorrectly, or they have, like, you know, their, their fast lands, and then they're saving their Aether Hub, it really can, like, mess yep. them up. Or oh, they just drew a fast land for the... Uh, sorry. They just drew a fast land for their third turn, and they go, wow. And they're just, they're just uh, you know, just set back by a lot. But um, also good against the Chicana, which we'll see a lot more of. Yeah, I think so. Um, Black Green Delirium. It's just one of the best back. cards against Black Green Delirium, which you might not think at first glance, but it, it's definitely super good against that deck as, as they can't block as well. They have a fair amount of non-basic lands as well. Um, they usually play Grim, Grim Flayer, usually helps them stabilize mm -hmm. that type of thing too, and that, that won't work either. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Dally is great. The other two cards here we have Spell Queller and Archangel, both four ofs. Queller, not surprised at all. This was a just, hey, we need this for Marvel. The Marvel, the Marvel matchup is going to be prevalent. It's going to be all over. We want as many of this type of card in our deck as possible. Avacyn, the card's just phenomenal. But four, you don't think is four for a legendary card? Is this just one of those that just gets away with because if it lasts, you're just going to win the game? And yeah. you want as many in your deck? Yeah, if it lives, you don't really care that you have another one in your hand. Yeah, because it can flip. And plus, once you flip it, you can always play, play the, the, the other one, one anyway. Yeah. Um, with the f damage on the sack to protect your team. Yeah, which, which is, is a cool play. Yeah, I've definitely done that before. Um, it's pretty sweet that you can do that. It's kind of a messed up thing that a legendary creature can do. It's like, oh, you know... We're going to make this really, really powerful creature legendary so that, like, playing, you know, having four in your deck might not be the best idea. But, by the way, when it flips, you can play the second one, and it saves your team from getting wrathed and just lives. It's a mythic. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. But, um, yeah, so Avacyn, very good uh, against the creature decks, basically, and it lets you uh, commit a threat against against Marvel or the control decks with it and leave mana untapped on their turns most of the time. Yeah, putting a clock on Marvel is real, especially in a Gideon deck. And like you said, like being able to have a card like this that can not only put a clock, but can like help you in matchups versus like zombies as well, and Whirler Virtuoso by like just being mm -hmm. able to clear the board, um, is big game. And then Queller is just the focus of the deck, like you said before. But it's um certainly the reason why we're why you would play this blue white deck and selfless spirit protecting it is like the reason why the deck does well as people used to say like you draw two spell colors you win They're like spell color is not that good it's good but it's not that good but if you draw two you can't lose uh, yeah. i've heard people say that exact thing a lot of the time yeah kind of like uh, glory bound initia we've been seeing spell color whether it's coco decks you know the banned spirits and also white blue hate bears different variants of that showing up jess in modern. guy jess guy yeah Another Tamada deck. All right, let's get to some spells. Lots of answers to Ulamog. More answers to Marvel and Ulamog. So we have three Negates, four Stasis Snares, and two Cast Out. The first thing that comes to mind is, man, that's a lot of enchantments. It is. It certainly is. I think that, I think that it's probably right, though, because you have, like, mana untapped a lot, so it's not like these things actually, because they have flash as well, they don't exactly cost what they cost. Like, you, you just frequently have three and four mana untapped to play the game you want to play anyway. Yeah. The mm -hmm. only time when there's some, some awkwardness here is when, like, you really want to, like, leave up cast out but have to get a Gideon out of your hand, and, like, I could see that, or a Stasis Snare, like, you know, kind of hamstringing your mana a little bit, but most of the time, it's just like, oh, we leave up Avacyn and Queller, negate and then like just cast these removal spells when we when we can or whatever yeah it's weird because stasis snare is like one of the best cards with dealing with a range of things like we're talking about a card that deals with ulamog takes out harder kieran and also deals with gideon like right now in, a, in the format where everyone's playing dissenters deliverance and manglehorn mm -hmm. there's not a lot of clean cut answers to stasis snare besides opposing cast outs and anguish on making it also um, deals with all the gods yeah, which is worth true. noting because we're going to see some more gods now that now that Ulamog is on the bench again. That's true. Gods mid range decks are going to come back. So Ronus, the indomitable, that guy's <laughs> yeah. going to be around. Yeah, he's great. I love him. Um, Negate. You think this is a card that was three of mainly for Marvel? Is that going to get trimmed down? Or are we going to see more yeah, removal spells? Like one for or sure? two, if that maybe maybe sensor. Uh, yeah, sensor would make more sense. 
sensor would make more sense. It would it would make more sense going forward. Okay. All right. I could still see playing one negate though, because there's still a lot of planeswalkers around. The I man, like this slide. It's just the giddy. myth, the, the legend. legend, and we, all alone. Just, just, it has to be by himself. He's Gideon now. I was in the car. Still the best planeswalker in standard. Yeah. It's not close. No. He's just doing it. He's just ridiculous. He's just like, you know why I'm this glad... This card is... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. This card is so good that it took playing a 10-10 indestructible double vindicate on turn four to make it so that it wasn't the most powerful thing you could be doing. Yeah. You know <laughs> You know why this? Why he's all alone, too? I think uh, our production manager really did a good job with this one. Why is that? Because... The two cards that would be next to him, Smuggler's Copter and Reflector Mage, Reflector Mage, are in our band now. No longer with so us. So he's just the he's the last remaining, like last of the Mohegans. He's got the last laugh too, because he's like, well, that should have been me all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't really need to talk too much about this card. It's just the best thing you could be doing for four mana, and yeah, it's very versatile in this deck. The one thing that's not worth noting is that you crack. You make an emblem with this a lot of the time. Like, I'd say well over half of the time. And the other half of the time, you just play it, and no one has anything in play. And you make a token, and then you attack them for five a bunch of times, and they die. Yep. So, like, it, it's split pretty much between that. Uh, it's Sometimes you can, like, play it and plus it if you think that they could, they have a removal spell and can attack it for exactly four. You'll see that happen once in a while. Like, sure. If your opponent has a tireless tracker in play... And no clues, like you might just play it, plus it, and then like, because they can go like, crew, clue, crack, fatal push, and attack, and they can get through only four, exactly four, and then you can like deal with their tracker and attack for five or whatever. That makes sense. Something that happens once in a while. But most of the time, you just play it, and pop it for an emblem and attack with a bunch of creatures. And the times you don't do that, you play it, and then take make a token, over. and just takes over. Gotcha. But yeah, great card. All right, let's get into the mana. We've got uh, 10 planes, 6 islands, 4 port towns. Uh, the planes, mainly a consideration. We have a ton of double white, and we want to be playing Thraven mm -hmm. Spectre on turn 1. I think there might be one too many islands in this deck, and not enough or more Westvale Abbeys we need. But anyway, yeah, ten, 10 planes is good. You, have, you need a lot of, uh, I think you need 16 sources for double white on turn 3 or turn 2, and I think there's 18 white sources in this deck. Okay. So that's perfectly good. Uh, Port Town just helps smooth out the mana. We have a ton of basic lands, so it should be, you know, coming into play untapped a lot. Basically an untapped dual land all the time, and it's an untapped dual land in the early turns when the next slide is not. True. We have the uh, the opposite side of the spectrum here, Prairie Stream, where once you play a lot of those basic lands, then we have that coming into play. And the one of Profane Prince, Ormondal. Just have a Why little... Why is it the wrong side? It should just be the Westvale Abbey. It could be, but it it's makes the me mad. But it's whatever. And it's not the Profane Prince. It's Ormondal. It's... Profane Prince. It's... Yeah, he's the Prince. He's the Prince. He's the Dark Knight. Um, I'm not a, a big advocate on putting it in here, but it is kind of free. I think the second one is free, too, but the that's second me. One? I'm a little greedy. Yeah. There's 25 guys in this greedy. deck, right? Yeah, we have 16 on the first slide, I saw ten, right? Yeah, ten, 16, 16 basics and 16 8 duels. 16 and 8 duels. And uh, 25. 25, yeah. That's a little high, but it's probably fine. We do have 4 Avacins. I think you want to cast the Avacins. Yes. And now, onto the sideboard. And onto the side. 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. Here we go. Mother May I package. Uh, yeah, not so allowing like, people to do stuff. Well, there's... Uh, a lot of negates main decks, so the dispels, the idea is to make sure that your negates are good. So just to be clear, when you say a lot, you mean the maximum amount in this 75? Well, the maximum yeah, amount that, that's the playing. fourth one, but yes. There's three in, there's three in the main decks, so um, having three dispels, it's just generally you're going to be forcing your negates through and doing something like protecting your spell quellers. Yeah, it's a deck like Marvel that I has a lot I, of instants. I think, honestly, the dispels, I, th I believe they were for the blue-red matchup. So that you too. could force through like a Gideon on turn five, maybe. Uh -huh. no, um, I mean, there, like, there's certain. I would certainly play them there as well, but I also think that I have a couple in my deck against Marvel. Okay. Okay, that makes sense if they try to go for it on turn. Uh, I might five. even have Essence Scatter in my deck against Marvel. I do. I'm an every single counter spell that I could possibly have against. Them. I like Essence Scatter a lot. Being able to take tempo too and like counter the Rogue Refiner Whirler uh, Virtuoso 
it's kind of big game. Because now that it puts them in a position to where, like, they can't really, you know, attack. And so you're just waiting them out, and you're a better waiting them out to yeah, because yeah. you're flash. You can attack so. everything. You can commit threats at instant speed, and they can't. From playing on both sides of a Marvel player and against a Marvel player, I've noticed, like, the games where people have Rogue Refine or World of Virtuoso servants, and they're getting in some damage, they're so much different. People play against them so much differently. They feel like, oh, I have to do something at this point, and that's yeah. when they win. And that's when they marvel you. Yeah. Yep. All right, you can't nice. marvel anymore. No, no, no. no. <laughs> All right. Uh, two Aether Meltdown. Deal with Hardikirin. Aggressive. Basically it. Maybe Avacyn. Okay. Um, Busier of many faces. Also Grim Flyer. Aether Meltdown's a good answer to Grim Flyer. Clean Cut. Deals with uh, Long Test Cup as well, right? No. Well, it does. I mean, it does for a two. while, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But decks that play Long Test Cup generally can make a lot of energy. And they sure. can make it a 1-5 and then start making it bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, that gets in. I don't think it actually deals with long test cup. It does deal with it, it for slows the time it down. Being. Vizier of many, many faces. Many faces indeed. Um, I you can copy any creature. Any yeah. creature on the battlefield. I mean, seven mana is a lot, but people are like copy an Ulamog and then stasis stand their Ulamog. You're probably not doing that because if the Ulamog came into play, you probably lost two lands. You can just copy their Ulamog and block it. That doesn't seem like a winning proposition. You still get built for 20. Well, yeah, but then you can stay Cicero when you want to. Yeah, I guess that's fair. And they probably don't have a clean-cut answer besides another Ulamog to deal with your Ulamog. Yeah. I wish we would have uh, asked him what this card was in there for when we saw him this last weekend. Unfortunately, we didn't. All right, one of the boat. Burn! <laughs> <laughs> Card. The deck actually has one of the cards that I was surprised that wasn't in the list, and we can get into this a little bit later. Um, is the Heart of Kirin, and like because this is Crew Three, we have Glorybound Initiate, we have Thalia, we have Avacyn, but other than that, there's not. I guess besides a Gideon being able to crew it as well, like there's the heart, no there's not a lot um, of like three. There's no Scrap Heap Scroungers, sure, which the Esper Aggro or Esper Vehicles deck has. Okay, and that deck plays Heart of Kirin. And that's like this deck plus Scrap Heap Scrounger and Heart of Kieran. Okay. It's basically the same deck. Um, just a little bit more aggressive. And then the last five it. cards here, we've got what you like to call the worst Obnixilis. It's just, Jason Raveler of Secrets is just not a good card. I don't know. I, I love this card. It's It does different things. Being able to return a creature is sometimes exactly what you need. And other times just not really doing much of it, much at all. Um, but five mana scry draw, you definitely don't feel like that's worth it until maybe the third time you do it. I mean, I better get to do it the first time this thing comes into play, or I have no interest in it being in my deck. Yeah. But well, <laughs> I, I mean, like, after you do it the first time, you're still, would you pay five mana to scry one, draw a card? No, you don't. Certainly not. But, like, once you do it the third time, scrying three, drawing three, you kind of mm -hmm. feel like you're doing it. Well, I just don't want to bounce a creature with it and then have it get unlicensed disintegration or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, like, really bad. F five mana unsummon? Yep. That's pretty But, bad. I mean, your deck is aggressive enough that sometimes a five mana unsummon would actually be good. Yeah. So, like, I could see s spots, you know, black green energy or something like that, where you would want to do that. How about you copy their Ulamog with Vizier and then return their Ulamog with yeah. Taze? You that'd can do be, that. That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, and lastly, Dust and Dawn. Uh, again, probably for the Black Green Snake matchup, for the Zombies matchup, Dust the Dawn is pretty good, as you have a lot of smaller creatures, and you also have self Spirit. Yeah, you got 12 creatures that you can get back with it, and like, I think like, you're mentioning, it's just like a, it's a free second half of a card. Well, yeah, but like, you can just save all your three power creatures, yeah. your Avacyn and your Thalia. Yeah, one side of the Just self Spirit, sack self Spirit, save all these things, Dusk, and then, um... Their stuff dies and yours doesn't, and then you can get back the Soul Spirit with Dawn. Yeah, between uh, Liliana's Mastery and the Lord, like, zombies are usually always going to be powered three or higher. Yeah. Like, in the beginning stages of the game, they're going to be two twos, whether they have Lord. And but the beginning stages of the game are the times when, like, your creatures are favorably, like, matched up against them. Yeah, like Thalia. It's good. It does, it's even fine. Pumping Gideon putting even tokens Even Draven out. Inspector is fine. It trades with a zombie in the early game. A yeah, lot that's of the time. true. It does do that. But then, um,. As it gets, as the game progresses, they they take, they actually like don't attack. They like draw cards with Crypt Breaker and like just amass like a huge board and then attack all in like one or two turns. Yeah. And like this is good because it punishes them for like trying to do that. 
And they might be able to draw a couple extra cards off their Crypt Breaker as well, but like you're getting a three for one or whatever, five for one. Yeah. So it's sweet. It's a pretty big game. Um, I think this is a good sideboard card. All right. Sure, for sure. Final thoughts. We got to meet Ryochi Tamana this weekend in Vegas. He was great. He was great. So for those of you that do like this deck, I would just, you know, keep an eye on what he's doing. He's been proven now multitude, uh, multiple times again and again of having a really good, a keen eye for the aggressive, the tempo decks. Um, Is he from platinum? Jeskai Black. I would think so. I'm not 100% sure. He just wins all the time. He, he was the world last year, right? So we talked about um, the negates going down. Do you think a card like Carter Kieran might make it an appearance in this deck? Um, I think they would, people would not. I think they could probably support it on a statistical level. But I think it's more likely that people would just not put it into their deck until they also had Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay. Which is possible maybe you're supposed to just do that. I just think that there's going to be, there might be a trend down of Manglehorns and Dissenters Deliverances because oh, of Marvel going be. away. There certainly will be. And there's been an, a, a decent amount of uptick on some of the mid-range to aggressive slanted teamer decks. And just... Yeah, I'm just not sure that it actually bodes well for um, Heart of Kieran specifically because there will be an increase in Fatal Push again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> and lastly, do you think this is a deck that is going to be around now post Marvel since the banning on Monday? I definitely think that change? its best matchup is gone. Okay. Which it does not, you know, does not bode well for it. Okay. But I do think that it will still see some play, and I think that it's the type of deck that you can customize as well. You can change around like five or six slots to make it a little bit better against other things. You can even play like some Fumigates if you wanted or something like that. Okay. You can do, you know, it's, it's a pretty customizable deck. Like the, the shell is pr is a little underpowered right now, but like Gideon's still good, Abyssin's still good, you know? Yeah. All the right. number one reason to play Queller was certainly Marvel, though, and now that's gone, which is a shame. Yeah, it loses one more removal spells in the mid-range decks, especially naming Glorybringer come back into play. Um, spell Queller is going to lose a little bit of its luster. Um, because you're just going to be able to, you know, when spell quality first came in, we saw just a lot of remo a lot of decks were playing a lot of removal spells, mm -hmm. and yeah, you take the turn, and then they'd steal the tempo back by just killing the next one, and then yep. you know the, 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 the chain mage lightning, it, and then cast their collected company, and then yeah. reflector mage everything else too, and then you would be just sad. <laughs> All right, well that's going to do it for this week's deck of the week. I'm Dan Ward. I'm Kevin Jones, and we'll see you next Tuesday, hopefully at 2 p.m. Daddy is ready. The refs are ready. Are you ready? Yes. Earth Exemplar on turn two, attack you for seven. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we'll see you Have next week. Have a good week. one, guys. Thank 12.30. You. We'll be back and better than ever. Oh, I'm doing a dab.